already in progress. Awesome. And Allison will be presenting Nebraska Invasive Species, New Species, Collaborations, and Education Resources. Great, thank you. And as I go along, feel free to put questions in the chat and uh, we'll sure make, we'll sure uh, address those as we go along. So what is an invasive species? My program works with a federal definition of an invasive species, which is a species that can cause harm to, the hum to human health, the environment, or the economy. And we spend a lot of money in the United States every year on invasive species for research, prevention, and uh, management. And we spend $120 billion a year in the United States. Um, many people might not know that invasive species are one of the leading causes of why threatened and endangered species are listed. And that's because of competition for food and habitat mainly. And I'm really excited about the Recovering America's Wildlife Act in Congress that if that were to pass, we could get even more funding for Nebraska to prevent the spread and impacts of invasive species. So many of you have probably seen this invasion curve. And what I wanted to point out to you is on the x-axis, we have time and on the y, we have cost. And unfortunately with invasive species, um, a lot of times we're not quick about early detection and rapid response, but that really is um, at the most important thing when it comes to invasive species uh, management and, and early detection so that we can have the most success at potentially controlling the, um, the land mass that those invasive species invade as well as being more successful in managing them. And so that's why my program is here, is to work on that early detection and rapid response to really get information into the hands of the public and those resource professionals to know which invasive species we want you looking for, how we can use your help, and what you can do to prevent the spread of invasive species. And so it really is a, an outreach-based program as well as a lot of what I do is coordination with natural resource professionals um, to help them identify invasive species in their daily work and to provide education and outreach as we can and to uh, prevent those, those evasive species from spreading. We also uh, do conduct some research and I will talk about one of those projects. So the program was started in 2019 with funding from the Game and Parks Commission. They identified early on that they needed a, a person full-time working on invasive species of all taxa to help out their many uh, professionals that do such great invasive species work, but then also to work with all the other professionals, the state, the local, and the federal agencies in Nebraska and regionally that do invasive species work. So we're all talking and we're not recreating the wheel. Um, additionally, the program was funded by the Nebraska Environmental Trust, uh, the Nebraska Power, Pu Public Power District, and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, among other donors. And I've been in this coordination position for the last eight years. So many of you may or may not have heard of jumping worms, but this is one of the new species I wanted to put on your radar. Uh, jumping worms are actually comprised of 51 different species of worms. They are from Asia and they came over to us um, in, in nursery stock. So these worms reproduce asexually and their cocoons are the size of a mustard grain and they're black. So of course they are really well camouflaged in dirt. And so they come over to us um, in, in potted plants, also in mulch, we're good at spreading it around. Um, but we don't know a lot about these guys. And so um, something we're doing a lot of research on in the Midwest is to learn about what impacts these guys might have in a prairie system or even in the Midwest um, forest systems. We know a lot about the East Coast and the problems they cause in the Smoky Mountains, but we don't know a lot about them in the Midwest. And so I do need your help in figuring out where we have these in Nebraska. Why they're a problem is unlike the European nightcrawlers or earthworms that are really good at, at re uh, recycling those, um, those nutrients into the soil, they're great recyclers. These guys are not. They only eat about the first uh, at the first five feet deep of soil. So they bind up all of those nutrients and excrete that, them out and that washes them away. So it's not recycling those nutrients into the soil, uh, which would then give nutrients to trees and forests and plants and also help them root. It takes all that away. And so it actually causes a lot of problems um, even in water systems. So we still have a lot to learn about these guys, but I can tell you how to identify them. Um, so one thing is the nightcrawler, or if you go fishing, you know, those nightcrawlers you're familiar with, those are the European earthworms that are good guys. They're good recyclers. Um, and they're, they're really um, soft and mushy, unlike the, the, the jumping worms that are like a gummy bear. So if you push on a worm, it's like a gummy bear. It's probably an Asian jumping worm. The other thing to look at is their clitellum. That's their reproductive organ that, go, that is the raised part of a nightcrawler. On a nightcrawler, it, it doesn't go all the way around the body, but it does on the Asian jumping worm. So those are two, two differences. The really thing to look for is their activity though. 
if you see a, a worm on the sidewalk jumping around like this, you have an Asian jumping worm. Uh, the other way you can find out if you have these in your yard is by pulling back some mulch. And if you find that, that dry dirt that looks like coffee grounds, you have Asian jumping worms. Now, it's not, it's not something to be scared about. Like I said, we have a lot to learn about management of these guys, but for the most part, we're not finding they're really ruining gardens or anything in Nebraska at this time. Um, these are the only locations in Nebraska that I've received confirmation we have them. So please um, come to my website, anyinvasives.com, learn more and also report if you do find these anywhere in the state. That will help us to do some research and learn more about them. So another invasive species I want you to be aware of is the spotted lanternfly. And some of you may have heard of this um, in September, a Kansas 4-H student actually brought this to the fair um, for one of his pinned insect collections. And they said, where did you find that? And they said, northern or western Kansas. And they said, that's not good. Because the closest we thought prior to September was these guys were in Ohio. Um, so that's really close to home and really scary. But this has been on our radar, at least since 2019, the Department of Ag has been doing um, surveys for these guys on Tree of Heaven, which is their host um, tree. They can have over 300 things that they can cause damage to, but their host uh, back in, in Asia where they're native is the, the Tree of Heaven, which is an invasive tree, funny enough. So um, we have been doing surveys. We've never found it in Nebraska, but now that we have it in Kansas, it's more than likely we'll have it in Nebraska. So here's what they look like this time of year. Um, they are a plant hopper. And on the left is them with their wings closed. And in the middle is them with their wings open. Um, they're quite showy. They're small though. So they look really big here. But if you look at the picture on the bottom there, that's somebody's hand. So this is a pretty small insect, uh, but it's red. And so that will help us hopefully identify it if we do have it in Nebraska. Um, the problem with these guys is the females this time of year are laying egg masses on everything, literally. They lay these on trains. They lay these on the side of, of semis. They lay them on your vehicle, your tires. Um, and so that allows them to travel great distances. And of course, we have semis and trucks or in trains coming from the East Coast where the spotted lanternfly is very established um, every day. So we always knew it would probably come to Nebraska, but we just didn't think it would be this soon. So why do we care about these guys? We care about these guys because I have a feeling some of you like drinking wine and some of you like eating apples. And so those are just two of the commodities that these guys will ruin. Um, what they do is they will, they suck the sap out of the tree or the vine that they're eating at. They excrete a sugary substance known as a honeydew. And that honeydew is really sugary and it will grow a sooty mold, which is pictured on the lower left there. And that sooty mold will ruin grape crops and hops and um, and, and be very destructive to orchard plants as well. Um, not only that, you'll pick, you'll, if you see the picture on the left, they like to congreg congregate in the hundreds. And so if they're eating off a tree in the hundreds, it will cause damage just even to or ornamental trees. Um, so that's another reason as a landowner, you might be interested in these guys. And finally, being that this is a, a game of parks uh, conference, we have so many beautiful parks in Nebraska. And if we were to get these guys in our forests, they would secrete that honeydew on all the picnic tables, you know, all of our nice buildings um, and then it would grow that sooty mold. So it's really just unsightly and a pain to, to maintain those outside equipment or even just your deck in your backyard if you get these. Uh, the good news is these guys have been on the East Coast for a while so we are doing a lot of research to learn how to trap them with lures better and also management. Um, so it's good that we're at least coming later in the party to possibly have some uh, solutions thanks to the East Coast taking it early for us. So finally I wanted to, to let you know about some new plant invasive species to be on the lookout for. And if you're not familiar with our weed watch list, that's a, a list that's put together by um, our plant experts, uh, invasive plant experts to say, hey, these are species that we've seen for the first time in Nebraska, or once they're having a lot of problems with on our borders, and we better start looking for it in Nebraska. So you can find this on my website at the link below. And what this is, is we have a picture of the Nebraska Legacy Project map by Ecoregion. You click on whichever Ecoregion you want. It will then bring up a list of all the different plants we're concerned about. And so um, on the right here shows you the, the um, Sandhills ecoregion, and it shows you the highlighted species that we added in 2021. We are currently going through this process to update it for 2022, so check back uh, next year and we might have some new species added or removed. And the purpose of this species is to give to our weed control associates that are out there doing inspections to log acres of this plant when they find it, so that we can find out over time, is this really a pro problem in Nebraska? or is it not really spreading like we thought? And this is a tool that we use to list uh, noxious weeds in our state. 
So one of the species that was new to us that, that we just added was common tansy. This is a really showy kind of pretty plant. Uh, if you've ever been in Minnesota or Northern states, you may have seen that this is actually a, re a regulated plant because it causes so many problems. Uh, the problems it cause are, it can be uh, poisonous to livestock. It, re it reproduces in two different ways, through seeds and through rhizomes. So it's extremely hard to control uh, once you have a lot of stands of this, um, and it is perennial. Um, it can be kind of challenging to, to control as well. Uh, mowing as well as herbicide is the best way, um, but it does stay erect all winter. So this is a good time to look at this plant. If you're in that eco region, uh, let us know if you found it. Uh, it was found on the Niagara River. Um, and like I said, it's kind of showy. So that kind of works to our advantage that if it does get more widespread, somebody in the public might say, hey, that's a pretty plant and report it. Uh, so come to the website if you'd like to learn more on that. And then I wanted to talk about some collaborations. So if you've heard of the Nebraska Invasive Species Council, it's been around since 2012. It's comprised of the state, federal, and local agencies and organizations that did research, management, and outreach on invasive species of all taxa. Um, we are now going to be conducting virtual uh, monthly meetings, and so you're welcome to join us. And if you do invasive work at all, uh, we want you to be part of our group. We want to really uh, just be a, the purpose of this group is that we all stay informed, we don't recreate the wheel, and we kind of share information of what the latest and greatest invasive species are, or how we can work together um, to make sure that we're, we're um, doing the best early detection, rapid response, and research. And so the, the agenda and information on those monthly meetings is on my website, anyinvasives.com. The public and all of you are always welcome to our monthly meetings. And this is a slide showing all the different agencies currently represented on this council, and we want more. So we want, you know, all the, all the parties at the table doing invasive species work, um, very laid back group of people and wonderful to work for. Um, my, why I'm, I'm great at my job is because of these people. They're the ones feeding me the information on uh, the latest, the greatest invasive species, what's coming our way, um, so that I can provide the public and people the right information um, and the new information as it comes out. So another collaboration I wanted to talk about are uh, boater inspections and boater surveys we've been conducting since 2009 in Nebraska. And that's been with the Nebraska Game and Parks the Nebraska Game and Parks Commission and the Western Regional Panel on Aquatic Nuisance Species more recently. So let me talk a little more about that. So starting in 2009, uh, we started interviewing boaters to find out about their travel patterns, if they knew what zebra mussels were, and if they knew how to clean, drain, and dry their watercrafts and their gear to prevent the spread of aquatic invasive species. Uh, we did that program for a long time, but then we changed our focus in 2017 to be inspecting boats specifically. Because we had asked boaters for a long time about their behaviors, we decided to put into practice, let's just inspect boats and, and ask very little questions of the boater. So we were only asking them five to six questions and then inspecting the boat. Um, and so what we were, we were, what we were gaining uh, data on is, is travel patterns of those, boater, of those boaters, if they were clean, draining, and drying between uses, and also compliance with our aquatic invasive species stamp, uh, which is required for non-resident uh, non motor boaters. And um, we also, of course, were conducting extensive outreach and ed education since 2009. Uh, prior to COVID, it was about 200 events a year that myself and technicians were conducting. So. Um, in this virtual world, it's been great, but I look forward to going back to in-person education as well. So this shows you our, our survey results, our inspection results from 2017 to 2021. And the, the great success here I want to talk to you about is the, the high level of compliance we have. So because the Game and Parks and other partners put in funding uh, for aquatic invasive species prevention since 2009, uh, we have a very robust um, outreach program that's been very successful in getting boaters and anglers and the public to know about zebra mussels and to clean, drain, dry their equipment. Um, this is really a success story, and it's all about ed outreach and education. And so looking at 2017, we did 3,841 3, inspections. Only 79 of those boats had any risk factors. Now, what's a risk factor? That could be that it had water on board. It was dirty, crusty, or slimy on the outside. We found a muscle attached to it, um, et cetera. So there's just something on that boat that raises concern that it could spread aquatic invasive species and not be in compliance with the Game of Parks aquatic invasive species regulations. So that's very high compliance, and that's awesome. If you look at, at surrounding states, Nebraska really was, was kind of a, a, a success story in the Midwest in terms of putting resources and, and really finding out about their boating public and doing that outreach. 
Um, so then 2018, we did over uh, 1,900 surveys, only 72 had risk factors. 2019, we did over 2,800 inspections, only 196 had risk factors. Uh, 2020, we only did 920 ins inspections because of COVID, and we found 33 votes. But then this year, we did over 3,200 surveys or inspections, and we found a lot of um, in compli uncompliance, right? So we found more dirty boats. Now, why is that? Well, we found with COVID that we have a lot more pe people buying RVs, going boating, going fishing, which is awesome, right? We all want to be outside and recreating, but that just means we need to do a better job at, at getting our message to those new users that may have never voted before. So that's something we're finding regionally, like throughout the U.S., is that we just have this whole new group of voters and anglers that we need to reach out to. And so we can be creative and do that, and we're going to work towards doing that. So why I mentioned the Western Regional Panel is because it's comprised of the 19 states west of the 100th meridian. And states like, like Colorado created a system called the Western Regional uh, Data Sharing System. They've been using that for roughly uh, 10 years. And what they've been using that system to do is enter their, their watercraft inspection and decontamination results into a tablet in the field and then saving that to a cloud server. Um, and so all the inspectors, they have over... I want to say 500 inspectors, probably more throughout their state. And so every day they're they're putting that data into a system that then their aquatic invasive species coordinator can look at in real time and can say, hey, you know, we just had a boat from Lake Mead yesterday that has quagga mussels. We need to do more at this lake. And so it's just an amazing uh, data system that 19 states are now using. Here's in the green dots here, show you all the places in the Western United States using this in 2021. And they just started using it on the Alaska Canada border in 2021 as well. So we're hoping that this is going to be a national and international data set, uh, just because we're all going to be better if our inspectors on the ground can look at that data in real time. And that's the purpose of this. The other great thing about this is a data. Um, a, a huge source of data to look at risk, you know, risk assessments, and also to look at how we can pr protect our very important water bodies in our state and nationwide. Another collaboration is with the Nebraska National uh, Legacy Project and the, the Nebraska Forest Service, and that was with the Play Clean Go. Um, then this is Stuart behind me. So, so Stuart is our brand ambassador for Play Clean Go, and the and the campaign the campaign Play Clean Go means please go outside and recreate please clean your gear before you go home and then go on to your next adventure. And so my, my intent is to put more of these boot brush stations pictured here, like we did with the Legacy Program Project and the Forest Service um, through, throughout Nebraska. And not only just boot brushes, but you know, social media, printed media, all the above. So I'm looking for collaborators to expand this. And like I said, Stuart is brand new. He's our brand ambassador and we're creating some great um, social and, and uh, print materials that we can all use. So I'm looking for collaborators. Um, I'm looking to expand education for invasive species in K through 12 settings. I'm also looking to expand Play Clean Go throughout the state, uh, whether that be in, in print and in, in signage, whatever that looks like. Um, and, it, and it's for all sports, right? It's for water sports. It's for, it's for you know, ATVing. We have Steward doing all the above and we want people to know what to do. Um, also looking for partners for spotted lantern flies. You know, I'd like to put posters at like uh, rest stops, you know, when people are, are driving through Nebraska, maybe they can report it. Uh, so if you're interested in helping me with that, please let me know. And then if you have any technical assistance needs, outreach needs for invasive species, please keep me in mind. That's what I'm here to do. Um, we do have two curriculum that I wrote with a uh, teacher, a high school teacher from Norfolk. Uh, they're both five days long. It has everything you need in these documents on my website. Um, and I'm happy to, to develop more. So again, I'm looking for collaborators. These are easily adaptable to for ninth or for fifth through eighth graders, very easy. Um, so these can really be used by a wide uh, range of teachers. And again, I'm, I'm very interested in writing other curriculum or supplements, anything that would be helpful to K through 12 educators. I also have a traveling backpack here. Um, I, I will mail it to you and you just mail back to me. We all also have these at ESUs around the state and I'm definitely interested in, in building more or something new like it, um, if that would be of interest to educators. We also have a set of education cards. There's 30 cards in here. Um, it's on invasive species of all taxa and it does include diseases and pathogens. And if we wanna create a new set of these for new, new purposes, I'm all about that as well. Um, they've been well received by teachers. The idea is to give this to a teacher, they read about the invasive species, then they can present it to their, their class or their audience, whatever age group it is. 
And finally, I have lots of printed materials and outreach materials I would love to give you. Um, I have invasive species field guides for plants, insects, and aquatics. I have lots and lots of different kind of brochures, and I'm definitely interested in developing more. If it's of help to you, lots of giveaway items with stickers, uh, reusable bags, pens, all that kind of stuff. So very interested in, in developing, you know, any of these kind of materials that would be helpful to you in your pursuits of invasive species work. Um, I also have recorded presentations. So thank you, COVID, for, for helping me uh, record all of my presentations so you guys can come and, and see those. We did an Invasive Species Awareness Week in February, and we'll probably do it again this year. And that was with the Nebraska Gavin Parks education staff. Thank you, Monica and, and all. Um, and I'd like to do that again and, and other, um, other similar things. So again, you can come to my website and download any of these presentations and watch them. And then I'm always interested in, in presenting to audiences virtually or in person, no matter what age group. So please keep me in mind for that. Here's my website, anyinvasives.com. Um, you can come to our website and report an invasive species finding or just something weird you find. So take a picture, send it to me. I'm in, in touch with all the other invasive and other kind of experts in the state. So the great thing is that I work with a, a network of people that are so helpful. And so I can get you an answer, at least find you someone that can help you. Um, learn more about how to prevent the spread of invasive species at my website. Learn more about all the invasive species we're concerned about. And guess what? We keep adding them. So come back often. And then finally, if you're interested in those education uh, materials, they're there. Um, and again, I would be happy to send you them. So just contact me. And my contact is on the website as well. And that's my contact information. So please get in touch with me. I'd love to work with you. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to talk about any questions people might have.